Hello everybody and welcome to another video from myself, Tim from the Planet Groups. I'll be looking to start a huge project to convert this uh, sorry looking mess of a pond into a proper koi pond. Here we go. So welcome to what I hope is a very interesting series of videos of my journey to change uh, my current pond into a proper koi pond. Uh, it's been in the works, well I've been thinking about it, put it that way, probably for about the last five years or so since moving to our, our present house. Um, we inherited this current pond which really hasn't been adequate. It's nice for the casual keeper but for me it wasn't really able to keep the koi that I wanted to keep. So it's always been on the cards for me um, that when the opportunity arises that we need to convert this into a proper size koi pond. The plan was always to increase the volume of water. This pond just wasn't deep enough. Uh, it's always uh, taken as the best uh, estimate that you should aim for around four foot in depth or, or deeper. And um, I am aiming for somewhere around 15,000 litres. Um, I had to think about lots of different areas around the filtration, how the building material is going to um, come together, how to get uh, power, how to get mains water there, and also how to get a, um, a place to drain the water as well, as I can't run it up the hill, as you can see in the background of my garden. So um, one of the big other jobs with part of the initial construction was to create a, uh, a chamber for the water or the waste water to go into as a soak away. So uh, I've learned a lot around drainage and is part of one of the first elements of this. So in the video we're going to talk uh, initially about how I put together the, um, the soak away boxes together. Very interesting pieces of, of, of hardware, very simple. Um, so we'll be demonstrating that in a, in a second. That then has to be buried, which we'll see in one of the other later videos. Uh, in this video, it's more about the deconstruction of the current pond and then some of the materials I've got coming in because this thing's going to be humongous. Um, so, lots of different elements. Each, each day, we'll track our progress. I'll put on a lot of time lapse as well and try and talk you through some of the different pieces. On that note, let's start it up and let's get going with the tanks for the soak away. This is the area where the current pond is. You can see, it's a little bit of a mess. It's gonna look hopefully quite different. We will see. Um, still got a couple of fish in there, which I need to move out. And um, we will start demolishing shortly. New pond's gonna be about three meters by four meters and about 1.5 meters deep. Hopefully fiberglass with two windows, I'm hoping. But yeah, it's looking good. So all the family got involved in this part of the project. We initially had all these tanks arrive. It's a relatively simple push fit type system. Um, I'll demonstrate it in a, in a second, um, but to be honest, I thought it was very easy, but there were no instructions which came with it. And what I did find, actually, was that uh, where I was creating a sort of shell of a box, it also needed inserts in the middle as well. So I did have to go back and then go back through and add in the two separate inserts. So um, just watch out for that. Um, they really missed out on the instructions uh, for, for this. And what I thought would be very straightforward, actually, wasn't because of it. But once you knew how to do it, it was quite easy. So, just don't make the same mistake as us. Um, say everyone enjoyed using their, their, their mallets and, their, and hammers on these things. To, um, it was a good stress release before the, the main construction started and my wife was very much getting involved in this element of it. So you can see you're actually adding the inserts now in the middle, trying to uh, just get those in the right places because there were um, several holes that could have actually gone into.
All right, now I'm gonna demonstrate how to set up the soak away crates. Beautiful. Also a word just used to describe my wife. Beautiful. <laughs> and for allowing me to build a new pond. Nice. Flip over and then, oh, we're out of, we're out of edges. <laughs> but anyway, two more go on the top and then you get a finished product just like that one. Good work, darling. <laughs> So at this point, the heavens opened, so we had to buy an umbrella. Um, our time's limited, so we need to make use of every time, so hoping the weather's not going to get too much in the way. Uh, just a couple of fish left in the pond. A lot have been moved over the previous days into the quarantine pond. Please take a look at my other video um, about that one. But uh, they've all been slowly moved to the filter, uh, was able to catch up and work adequately. Here comes my brother-in-law. Uh, initially, we were like, right, how do we take this old pond down? decided uh, the best uh, course was to use sledgehammers, but I had no sledgehammers. Um, it's the one tool I don't tend to have, but the back of my handy axes I use to chop on my wood are effectively uh, sledgehammers. So we decided to use that. And this gentleman who's come in here actually, someone who's interested in the plant, that large sort of uh, yucca plant we've got at the back needs to go. Uh, so I'm interested in if anyone's interested in actually taking it off our hands. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that should uh, go shortly. Um, it actually worked out a lot more difficult than I was thinking to take off these just first layer blocks. I'd actually taken some off to change the liner in there. We had we had a leak um, and it'd gone back on and I'd done it quite well. So it was quite tough and I was trying to save some of the bricks if possible because I'm sure some of them um, may run up wanting to be reused as well. I was even trying to save some of the liners as well as I know some people um, would appreciate a free liner um, but it actually turned out they just weren't able to do that. There you can see actually the axe broke, um, flew straight off the handle and went right these axes obviously aren't up to the job so now it's off to the tool station to go and get some proper sledgehammers. The ducks enjoy themselves there quite happily. Okay, now we have proper sledgehammers, but we are still getting absolutely soaked from splashing the water um, and it's raining as well. What you're actually tending to see on the bottom pond right now is the water's coming up from underneath the liner and pushing the liner up because there's no water left in it. Um, shows you how the, the water table works in our back garden. It's getting serious now, the wheelbarrow is out. Realize, beginning to come to the realization that actually there's gonna be a lot of waste material from this whole pond. Did not really think about that element of it. It's about now where my, um, my helper Started struggling with his back, um, so it was uh, perhaps a bit more of a, a one-man show. I wouldn't call it a great show. <laughs> you can see how tired I'm getting just from using the sledgehammer. <laughs> just a little. I'm just not used to that sort of level of uh, physical work. I sit behind a desk all day normally. What I did find useful is we've got a big um, sort of steel pole you can see at the front of the footage there by the pond. Um, that was quite good for levering um, different pieces out as well. Very handy tool to have.
current one I'm doing this, I'm being watched by about six other people <laughs> who aren't able to help. So they're all finding it quite amusing how, uh, how filthy I'm getting. It's a bit uh, quite satisfying when one of the blocks come out and you release a load more of the water. Now we realise that actually what might be quite a good idea is to use an SDS drill, which I have. Why didn't I think of that at the very beginning? I think we just went with brute force and thought that would be a, a good idea. But I've got a big SDS drill with a big chisel on it. Um, my brother-in-law is able to start helping me again um, and it's not causing so much problems with his back. So we're, we're back to going much, much, much quicker. And that SDS drill is just flying through those blocks now and actually allowing us to save that much more if we need to as well. So uh, that was a, a very good move to, to do that. Over this time, this is probably about, I want to say, three, four hours of work, something like that, that we spent on, uh, on, on doing this part of the construction today. It was still a lot of hard work and uh, a lot more is going to be coming up. Uh, hold the waters out so you can hopefully start drying off a little bit which is always a good thing um, having some second thoughts about maybe position of the pond i'll just zoom out a bit more and see better uh, so might go down and take it further wider over over here so it's in line with that wall and therefore it becomes four meters square rather than four by three is what we originally wanted to do um, but that it then messes around with the specifications of the filters and so forth and adds a lot of expense so we may um, instead move it in here by a meter so as you come out of our patio uh, doors here um, you're not literally going straight into the pond so that's what we're, what we're potentially um, thinking that a few conversations going to happen tonight because you want to get it right first time so Good day's work, so far ways all built up. There's a big pile of rocks. Um, I'm uh, pretty shattered from the first day, not used to all this uh, physical labor, but we're, we're getting there. By the end of the week, I hope to be um, like Arnold Schwarzenegger in his day, not obviously now. All right, thanks for watching guys, and uh, stay tuned for the next update. Okay, so we got all the building materials from um, Sydenham's who I've got to say were ever so helpful. Um, I'm not an expert in building materials, so this uh, you know, was all new to me. So we've got some pipe work going in there for the, the waste pipe. Here we have a lot of the aggregate um, and the sand for the actual block work. It seems to be a mammoth amount of, of the stuff. Using sharp sand for all the walls to get a stronger mix. That was one of the key changes. Most people might use building sand, but we use sharp sand instead. Um, then underneath the actual base for the concrete, there'll be uh, a hardcore going down on the floor just to give the best base possible. We'll be using N7 concrete blocks. It's important to use at least that um, level of concrete block. You don't want to go any less dense than that. You won't get enough uh, strength in the blocks. So the, it will all be a concrete um, sort of shell for the pond to uh, give it the most structural um, that you can structure that you can give to it the support that it needs. What you don't want is anything ever to blow. See also I've got rebar in there as well, that'll be going underneath the concrete, that's those, those uh, metal rods, they just help add to the strength of it. And we're complete. Rebar, hardcore, damp proof, concrete blocks, boom. All the basics for the fun. Hope the weather holds off. That looking good.
Well, that brings us to the end of day one. I uh, really appreciate you staying with us. Lots of work we've done today. We've got the supplies and we've started demolition work. Looks a bit of a mess, but we have definitely made good progress. Looking forward to the next day. Please let me know any comments that you might have around the build below. Please like the video and subscribe for the next part. Thanks very much.